Hi, this is Kevin from MathSource, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use binomial expansions. I'll give you a bit of an introduction uh, about what they are and how they work. I'm really going to explain how uh, the numbers in Pascal's triangle come about and how you use Pascal's triangle uh, to do this multiplication out really quickly. Uh, don't forget there's loads more content over at the MathSource website. Uh, you might have noticed it's had a bit of a revamp recently. Um, so we've got this new branding. You can also get the t-shirts if you want or a mug or a cap, whatever you like. Uh, and the content is also really uh, much more easy to navigate and to find what you're looking for, I think. So let me know what you think about that. Um, do like and subscribe to the channel if it's useful and share it with your friends. Um, and I will get on with the video. So binomial expansions help us multiply out expressions of the form a plus b to the power of n binomial, literally sort of two numbers. So I've got a bracket with two different expressions in it raised to a power. And to start with, let's just think about some that we know. Okay, so uh, a plus b to the one obviously is a super easy case, just a plus b. We should also know how to multiply out a plus b squared pretty quickly, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And you could check just by doing an ordinary multiplying out of brackets here that for a plus b cubed, you would get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Uh, and I'm just going to write down one more. And again, you can check these just by, you know, doing a really longhand multiplying out here. And I'd get a to the 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 4, uh, uh, sorry, 6 uh, a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power of 4. And what I'd like to note about these expressions uh, is that I've written them out in a very particular way here, right? I've written them all with the power of the highest power of a first, uh, so a to the four a cubed a squared a, and then the one that doesn't have any a's in it, right? And I could rewrite these a little bit, right? So this first one, um, a plus b squared, I could write it a little bit more longhand here as one, uh, two one, these are the coefficients of each of the terms, and then the first one is a squared, the next one has just an a to the one, and the final one doesn't have any a's in it. You could, if you like, think of it as a to the zero, because anything to the power of zero is one. And similarly, I could write that this one has b to the power of zero, this has b to the power of one, and this has b squared. And this is going to be a theme through all of the expressions we write. I'm going to have the powers of a descending, the powers of b ascending, and the main thing we need to think about is where these coefficients come from, right? So similarly, uh, in this uh, a plus b uh, cubed expansion, I could rewrite that in the same way and say the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. And I've got the powers of a descending like this. And I've got the powers of b ascending like this. And this is just another way of writing exactly the same thing. And of course, I could do the same for the uh, a plus b to the 4 if I wanted to as well. Right, now let's think about uh, where these coefficients come from then, uh, because that's the main uh, point of this method, right? So think about what happens when you try to multiply out a plus b to the 4. If you've done it by hand, and I suggest you do this at least once, just actually work this out without binomial expansions, right? You would get that a plus b to the 4, you'd probably do something like doing a plus b times a plus b cubed to save yourself a little bit of work, right, because we've already worked out uh, what a plus b cubed is here, right, we've got it as a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed, right, and let's just think about where uh, one of these uh, terms come from, right, so let's just think about this 4 a cubed b term, right? So I get an a cubed b term here when I multiply this out by multiplying the uh, the a here by the 3a squared b. That gives me a contribution of 3a cubed b. And I get also one from the b times a cubed. That's just 1a cubed b, right? So I get 3a cubed b plus 1a cubed b. And you simplify it down and you get 4a cubed b. And of course, you have all the other terms in the multiplying out as well. But you see, this 4 has come 
from a, com a contribution that came from the 3a squared b, this one here, and from this a cubed that had a coefficient of 1. And we've done 1 plus 3 equals 4. And if you look at this carefully, you can see this pattern throughout. So this 6 here is 3 plus 3. Right? This 4 is 3 plus 1. So it looks like we get these contributions from the um, for, from looking at the sum of the two uh, coefficients from the previous expansion. And of course the ones at the end are always just 1, 1a one to the 4 and 1b to the 4. Okay. And this idea leads us to write down um, what's known as Pascal's triangle. Okay. So Pascal's triangle is going to tell us all of the coefficients for binomial expansions. And it's written out like this. It's got a 1 at the top and then a 1 and a 1 and then 1, 2, 1. So these are just the coefficients that we've written down before for the quadratic 1, 2, 1. The next row then is going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay. Now, it's not too helpful if we just have to memorize these numbers. So we actually make Pascal's triangle using this rule that to work out this 3, say, I add together the two numbers above to the left and the right. Okay. And if you like, you can think of there being sort of zeros everywhere to the left and, and the right over here, right? So that this 1 is just 1 plus, if you like, a 0 coming from the other side. Okay, So effectively we get 1s all the way down the sides and then we fill in the rest of the triangle like this. So the next row is 1, then 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then I get a 1 at the end, and the next row 1, 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then a 1 at the end. Okay, And so what this means is that if I wanted to do the expansion of uh, a plus b to the power of 5, say, I could now just apply this uh, same rule, right? So I've got the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. I do 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. And I'm going to have a to the 5, a to the 4, a cubed, a squared, a to the 1, and a to the 0. And then here we're going to have b to the 0, b to the 1, b squared, b cubed, b to the 4, and b to the 5, and then I just add all of these together. And again, you know, usually we don't write out the terms with the 1 and the b to the 0 necessarily. I put it here just for emphasis, so you can just say that this is a to the 5 plus, again, 5a to the 4, b to the 1, we usually just write as b, and then these terms uh, can stay as they are. Here I've got 5a b to the 4 and the last term here is just b to the power of 5. Okay, So that's really the idea and I can keep going down Pascal's triangle as far as I want. So when I do these questions I look at whatever power I've got here, I just match that up with the right row in Pascal's triangle so you always want the row that has this number as the first number that's not the 1. So you're sort of effectively looking down this um, diagonal here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got this is the row for doing uh, fifth power expansions. Right, so I'm just going to do three examples to make this um, very clear then, hopefully. So we'll do, okay, let's start with this one, 2 plus 3x to the power of 4. So uh, what you have to do now is just match up what a and b are in these expansions, right? So this isn't just a plus b anymore, but you know a is 2 and b is 3x. And we're looking at the, a power 4 expansion, so I'm going to use this row 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So I'll just start by writing down those coefficients. Um, and my a this time is 2, so I've got 2 to the 4. And I usually put these in brackets to stop any confusion. Uh, it's particularly helpful when you've got negative values. So I think um, until you're super confident, even when you are actually, it saves a lot of mistakes. You just put all these terms in brackets and then simplify at the end. Okay, and you'll see what I mean. So 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 0, and then I've got 3x to the 0, 3x to the 1, 3x squared, 3x cubed, and 3x to the 4. So the nice thing about doing this is it makes it all totally routine, very hard to uh, make mistakes here. Probably made one. I'll probably make one now I've said that. But um, you know, that's the first line, and then just make the second line the simplification. So one times two to the four 
is just 16, and 3x to the 0 is just 1, so that doesn't appear. Then I get 4 times 2 cubed, so 4 times 8 is 32, times 3 is 96, and I've just got an x here. Now be careful, again, this is why the brackets are really useful. When I do 3x all squared, I get 9 times x squared. So I've actually got 9 times 4 times 6 here, which is uh, 216, and then I've got an x squared. Similarly here, 3 cubed is 27, so I need to do 27 um, here uh, multiplied by um, a 2 and, uh, and a 4, which is also uh, 216, so that's 216 x cubed. And then finally I've got 3 to the 4, which is 9 squared, which is 81, so I've just got 81 times x to the 4, and that's my binomial expansion here in ascending powers of x. Uh, sometimes we prefer to write them as descending powers, so you might write the 81x to the 4 first and write these in the other order, but it's the same thing. Okay, so two more uh, examples just uh, of things that you should be able to do. So firstly, something we've got a minus in place here, right? So let's do 2 minus x cubed, right? So um, it's still the case that I'm looking at the line with the 3 in it here, so my binomial coefficients are 1, 3, uh, 3 and 1. Okay, so I'll start by putting those in. Uh, this time, you know, when we look at this, we've got, uh, you know, the a here is 2 and the b is minus x, right? So that's what I'm going to substitute in. So I'm going to have 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the 1, and 2 to the 0. This as you get faster, you don't have to write the 2 to the 0 in if you don't want to. Um, minus x to the 0, minus x to the 1, minus x squared, and minus x cubed. And so when we multiply these out, we just have to be careful of the signs. So the first one here is 1 times 8. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so this is just plus 8. Here I've got a minus x, so it's going to be minus, and then 3 times 4 is 12 times x. Um, oh, I didn't put my pluses in between these terms. There we go. And the next one I've got minus x squared, so that's plus x squared times 3 times 2. So that's just uh, plus 6x squared. And then minus x all cubed is minus x cubed. So I get minus, and everything else is 1 here, so that's just minus x cubed. And that's going to be the case. If you've got a minus in here instead of a plus, you get the signs alternating positive, negative, positive, negative, like that. OK, uh, one more example. We can put slightly more complicated things into these expansions if we want to. So let's do 2x minus y squared all to the power of 4 and put all of these things together. So again, my coefficients here are for n equals 4. So I'm going to do 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Um, and that's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And we will go down in powers of 2x. That's our a here, so that's 2x to the power of 4. 2x cubed, 2x squared, 2x to the 1, and 2x to the 0. And uh, this time I've got minus y squared as the b, so I'm putting that whole thing in here. Uh, so that's to the power of 0, minus y squared to the 1, minus y squared squared, minus y squared cubed, and minus y squared to the 4. I think I've got just enough space to put my pluses in between each of these terms, just about. And so to finish here, we just have to simplify each of these terms. So I've got 2 to the power of 4, which is 16, and I've got an x to the 4, so that's um, 16x to the 4. Now I've got 4 times 2 cubed, so 4 times 8 is 32, and I've got a minus here this time, so it's minus 32, and I've got an x cubed here, and a y squared from this bracket. In this one I've got 6 times 4 is 24, I've got an x squared, and then a y squared squared is y to the 4, and it's minus squared, so that's a plus. Again, the next term, just like before, they're going to alternate plus minus here, so this one's minus. This time we've just got 4 times 2 is 8, times x, and then y squared cubed is y to the 6. And then I've got, finally, plus 1 times 1, uh, and then plus y, minus y squared to the 4, so that's plus y to the power of 8, and that's our binomial expansion. So you can see that once you've got the hang of this, it makes multiplying out binomial expressions uh, super fast and easy. 
and it and this method actually also has so many interesting things about it I'm going to make a few more videos about things in the binomial expansion I've already made one before about um, amazing fractal patterns you can get uh, from looking at Pascal's triangle and it's got this incredible link to probability as well that we'll look at in another video.